throughout the many years of coming to Colonial Williamsburg, I often wished to stroll amongst the city, but find my path abruptly interrupted by historical improvisations pulled straight from the vaults of 18th century life lived here. My imagination often running wild, visualizing a simple walk down the Duke of Gloucester Street finds me overhearing detailed discussion amongst slightly inebriated burgesses departing a local tavern as I nonchalantly listen in to their secret conversations regarding resistance to the crown, or witnessing the outrage of the colonial people in dispute of the latest absurd proclamation by the king. Even better, as my exaggerated mind continued to wander, a flickering lantern casting faint light upon a narrow alleyway where stealthy redcoats under the cover of night sneak through the city to heist the town's hefty stash of gunpowder. There were so many scenes in my head as I eagerly envisioned sudden, unexpected events taking place around just about every corner, incidents that would quickly thrust visitors of the city back to colonial times, when these grounds were bursting with daily affairs and developments from those earlier years. Eventually, I learned that Colonial Williamsburg, aside from the many interpreters that roam the city today, did something very similar to this in the past through a street theater program called Revolutionary City. Street performers carrying out historic melodramas, playing characters of both ordinary and important peoples, with the backdrop of old Colonial Williamsburg completely surrounding them. The program eventually subsided, but has now returned, mirroring the past unscripted performances that took place here, now coined intersections. I awoke early on a rainy Saturday morning in hopes of watching one of their latest street presentations. This one taking place right on the Duke of Gloucester Street in front of the Raleigh Tavern. Come in, December 26, 1773. Several people in the past have been working about their day here in Williamsburg. Tensions have been building between Great Britain and her North uh, American colonies. Ten days ago, men in Boston dressed as Mohawk Indians threw 342 chests of tea into the Boston Harbor as a political protest. We all remember that today as a very famous Boston Tea Party. But on December 26, 1773, people of Williamsburg had not yet received news of that incident. They are less concerned with political matters than they are with hearth and home. For today is the first day of Christmas time, the 12 days of Christmas. In the opening scenes of the performance, the people of Williamsburg are now preparing for a holiday ball at the local Raleigh Tavern. Enslaved individuals responsible for preparing for the festivities have to contend with common ailments associated to their wintertime living conditions, all while enduring the many difficult challenges and obstacles of meeting the high demands of the occasion. For one enslaved woman readying for the fast approaching event, she also hoped for one special gift of gratitude from her owner. And uh, this evening in the Apollo Room right here in the Raleigh Tavern, there is to be a ball. <laughs> maybe. Uh, what do you mean, maybe? Well, maybe there will be a ball and maybe there just won't be. I'm doing my best, but with all of the people here suffering from the Christmas compliments, there's only a few slaves here healthy enough to even do all of the work. The Christmas compliments? The ague, the coffin, the sneezing, the aches, the pestilence. Comes every year this time at Christmas time, so we call it the Christmas compliment. Flora, Celia, Betty, Dinah, Venus, Will, everybody's sick. You do not want to go up upstairs to the laundry. It's like an infirmary over there. I'm trying to take care of everybody. I, I know they do the same for me. I'm doing my best for Jerry. The preparations for the ball are nowhere near finished. I still gotta go. decorate the Apollo room with Holly, Ivy, Laurel, and Rosemary. Then I gotta get more firewood, polish the silver, set the refreshment table, and count the barrels of rum in the cellar because Davy wasn't able to get the shipment done this morning. Oh, no, Davy had the Christmas compliments as well. No, Davy fell hanging mistletoe and hurt his leg in the bar room yesterday. Oh, right. And I gotta clean the rooms above stairs, prepare dinner and supper, and gather what's needed for the punch if I can only remember that last ingredient. Oh, and uh, and empty the chamber pot. No, no, that is Millie's job. I am not a child. Empty a chamber pot. I will not. I will not. I will not. All right, all right. But but someone has got to do it. Yeah, you're right. 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 Ye
right, and that somebody's me. And I gotta do a good job, because if I do, then maybe Mr. Stuff all will thank you. Give me what I asked for in my Christmas box. Oh, uh, what's a Christmas box? A, a gesture of gratitude. We work and work for our masters and mistresses all year long with very little in return. We keep our heads down and the chamber pots emptied and the food on the table, and one time a year, master turns and gives us something that he calls a Christmas box. Do you believe it's gratitude? I suppose some of them think of it that way, but it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, one kind gesture's not going to absolve them. By law, they have to feed and clothe us, but they don't have to do anything else. And most of them do as little as they can. But on St. Stephen's Day, our masters and mistresses turn to us and give us something. Something that we might want, something more than a peck of corn or a slab of meat. What would you like for a Christmas box? Well, what I really want is to go and visit my family. See, I've been hired out here to the Violet Tavern all year. And last year, come mid-December, they took me home so Master Earnshaw could take a look at me. But mid-December come around this year, and nobody said anything about going home, so I, uh, I, I figured Mr. Suffolk might have anticipated how busy it was going to be and asked if I could just stay on through the Christmas time season. You mean you don't know? They only tell us what they think we need to know to do what they want us to do. I ain't seen my people since last December, and I'm missing something awful. Yeah, I, I did ask Mr. Sullivan if I could have a pass to go home after Christmas time when everything slows down a bit, and he well, hasn't given me an answer yet. But if I do get a pass, I can go home and visit my people for a day or maybe two. I can get there myself, and I'll make my way back. I see. Yeah. Well, anyway, I do need to get back to this long list of chores I got. I'll start by gathering the ingredients for the punch. I can't remember the last part of that rhyme. I know it's one part sour, two parts weak, three parts strong, and four parts, four parts what? Weak. Yes, yes, four parts weak and, and spice. Nice. Yes, thank you. <laughs> weak and spice, weak and spice. You're welcome. <laughs> Good luck with the preparations, uh, Phyllis, and uh, I do hope you get to see your family. Thank you, me too. Well, it seems that Phyllis has a great deal to do today. Enslaved people always did. Like all balls that were held inside the Apollo Room at the Raleigh Tavern, this festive holiday celebration that would take place would include a feast and punch, seasonal decor, and ample jollity for all in attendance. Making an appearance at the Raleigh Ball, it would render most beneficial the ability to dance appropriately in order to not make a laugh of oneself during the fine grand occasion. For many of the onlookers of the theater, as well as one young man pursuing a young lady here on the evening of the celebration, some careful training prior to the event is in order. During the coldest months of the year, the people of the past enjoyed many holiday traditions, just as we do today. Decking the halls, singing Christmas carols, feasting, telling ghost stories, Dancing. Dancing! Oh, uh, that is my favorite. <laughs> when everyone knows their steps, it all moves in order, and it's satisfying, and it's orderly. A little bit chaotic, a delightful time. But there's nothing worse than when someone does not know how to execute their steps properly. We've spoken on this. I agree. That's <laughs> why I'm here to meet a young man who is to uh, ever see the dance lesson for the ball this evening. Now, this young man, who prefers to remain anonymous as he is rather embarrassed on the matter, is a dreadful dancer. <laughs> However, he has taken a liking to a young lady who is rather fond of dancing, and he hopes to gain her attention, as well as her affection, with the ball this evening. I doubt he will be successful if he steps on the young lady's delicate feet. Well, the pursuit of love is a noble cause. <laughs> I wonder, uh, Ms. Howell, would you have a few moments to teach us a few figures? Uh, I have some friends here from far away who I'm sure would love to learn. Isn't that right? Oh, well, with that encouragement, how could I say no? Oh, how no? kind of you. Indeed. Well, uh, we will do a, a very small dance. You must begin at the beginning, you know. Uh, do you all know your courtesy? You do. No, a few, well, not nearly enough of you. You must begin and end every dance with your courtesies and honors to your partner. So, uh, all of you, we will all learn this. Come along now. Join in. Stand up. Right Everyone here, come along. Now, we all will learn both the ladies and the gentlemen's courtesies, so you will who are well prepared to teach them to whoever might need to know them. So, we're all going to do them. We'll begin with the ladies' courtesies. You 
place your feet in a V, like so, heels together, toes apart. Place your hands delicately in front of you. I'm watching all of you. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Very good. And, uh, and then uh, proceed with a bend of the knee, a plie. Ah, nicely done. And now we shall proceed with the gentleman's courtesy. Now choose a foot and place it before you. And we shall all do Very good. Now point your toe just a bit so that the toe is touching the ground. And uh, you shall bend your back leg. Keep your forward leg straight. You cannot see mine, but trust that it is doing that. Uh, just lay your arms out and bend all at the waist over your forward leg. Ah, nicely done! Nicely done! Very good. Well, now we are able to dance. Who here presently is particularly excited to step a few steps? Come along, my friend. Come along. Yes, yes. Join. Come along. If you're excited, go right to the music. You shall have a set of arm dogs. Uh, very good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. One more. One more here. We have one more here. We have one more here. Now we need one more. Where are all of the gentlemen? I come along. You now. Uh, this is your partner, is it not? Oh, you shall join her. Then you didn't know, but you were always here. Look at this. We ha uh, all right, now we shall make two lines here. Anyone else? This is your last chance. Very good. You can still dance the dance. You can still learn the figures. Just do it where you are. And if you should like to make your own set on the side, you can do that as well. And the set is two lines a partner. So we're beginning it here very well. I come along across from him, though, since you have gotten into this position. <laughs> and uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, Jerry, would you please join here? Oh, and you, my friend, step across the way. Partner. All right. Uh, you here, madam. So on. Oh, uh, you come with me. You should be my partner. Come on. Let's go. Now you have that. Very good. Oh, this way, my friend. What's your name? Grace, come along. Everyone's hot for Grace. Now, Grace, you shall stand here. We will be at the head of the tent, at the top of the tent. And we have a set up on the screen. Now, we are going to learn a very short dance today. English country dances are made of figures. And these figures, you can have an infinite combination of these same figures. So today, we shall learn three of those figures and put them together and have a small dance. Now these figures, um, uh, of course, we begin and end every dance with our courtesy, which we have learned. And the first figure looks like this. It is called a setting step. So you step to your right and your feet together, and then back to your left, your feet together. And you do that twice through. Let's all do it together by eight counts. I will count you in. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a good bit of flare happening here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is your setting step. Now we shall turn single, second figure. Oh, uh, uh, turn single over your right shoulder. So it looks like this. Watch me first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll do it by eight counts instead of four. Let's all try it together. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nicely done! Now the last figure is called a sachet, or a gallop. You can do it. It looks like this. Watch me first so we don't go running into one another. We are all going to gallop to our right by eight count, uh, by four count rather, and then back by four for a total of eight. It looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes? Yeah. Let's all try it. So you all will be going this way, and we will be going this way, opposite direction. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank we done! Now we're prepared for a dance, I believe. I don't know, this is all three figures. So remember, we begin and end with our honors. Setting step, turn single over your right shoulder, and gallop there and back. I shall call it as we go, but you know, we need some music. Music. Oh, music, music please. And there it is. Why are you all keep clapping? What would it be like? All right. Be ready, friends. We're giving them our honor. Honor your heart. Now to the right, to the left. To the right, to the left. Turn single. One, two, three, four, five. Three. Get ready to gallop.
just think this is tough. This is how you are an excellent teacher. I'm sure the young man will fare very well under your tutelage. I hope so, though he is rather hopeless. Well, we all have our gifts. And our deficiencies. <laughs> well, do enjoy the ball. I intend to. <laughs> Well, you folks uh, certainly have joined us today in a very busy time uh, at the Raleigh Tavern. I wonder how all of this is going to turn out. Um, will Phyllis and the other servants get all the preparations finished for the festivities this evening? And how about her desire to visit her family? Will she get, get what she wants in her Christmas box? And what of the young man? The young man who has uh, eyes on the young lady as a as an object of his interest. Uh, will he step on her toes or sweep her off her feet? Inquiring minds want to know. And I'll be back in just a few moments to have answers to all of those questions. But in the meantime, take a few moments and, uh, and enjoy the company of the people of the past uh, who are here. We have the Attorney General, Mr. John Randolph, uh, near the rally. We have Nat up yonder and Jimmy. And, uh, oh, Dr. Galt over here as well, Doctor. Uh, ben over yonder, and we have Eve and Agnes uh, from the Randolph property who is here as well. We're all here to share with you some of our 18th century life. The celebration brought forth many of the city's elite class of participants and other well-known socialites and gentry class citizens with evidence of the evening's happenings, leaving an everlasting and memorable imprint on all who participated. But for Phyllis, her Christmas gift came with much disappointment, revealing the hardships enslaved people of Colonial Williamsburg had to face during a time of year when others were celebrating the season. I want you to imagine that it's the next day December 27, 1773, and I have heard that uh, all the preparations were done in time and that the ball at the Raleigh Tavern was a great success. The patrons uh, entertained well into the evening, as was traditional in Virginia, and a grand time was had by all the attendants. Oh, yes. good. Indeed, <laughs> 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 all over the globe, candlelight, there was greenery in the morning windows, the mantle was a, a beautiful element, the punch was delicious, plentiful and potent, <laughs> as were the other tasty morsels that Supple had in the Daphne room. Uh, we all danced until our legs gave out, and then at the end of the evening, some of uh, uh, those in attendance, they, 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 uh, they told ghost stories. We're all left satisfied and happy. Uh, Miss Hallam, uh, what of the young man? Uh, the dreadful dancer? Oh, heavens, no, he, no lesson could help him. He is dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was so hoping he was going to impress the young lady. Oh, well, I am happy to report that he did indeed impress the lady. Oh. Right, she did not mind being stepped upon. She was so entertained by his efforts that uh, she simply blushed and giggled, and they retired after just one dance to the corner of the room where they stayed the rest of the evening. Oh, <laughs> young love. Right, uh, but they will keep each other warm this winter. <laughs> well, no doubt by ne next Christmas time they may be married. Uh, perhaps, who knows what the future will bring. <laughs> Happy Christmas to Happy you. Happy Christmas to you as, uh, as well. Ah, Phyllis. I understand congratulations are in order. I heard that the Raleigh Ball was a great success and uh, everyone was very pleased and certainly Mrs. Southall was pleased. She was. That's her mistress was very pleased indeed. Excellent. Uh, so you'll get to go see your family. No, Jerry, I don't think I will. You did not receive your Christmas box? Oh, I did. Oh. Two shillings and a bottle of rum to share with the others. Ah, no pants. No, no pass. I'm sorry. Me too. I also found out that I've been sold. Wait, sold? Yes. <clears throat> I, I don't know what to say. Nothing you can't say. <clears throat> well, well, where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. Mr. Southall bought me. That's why he didn't take me home. Master Earnshaw has no need to inspect me because I am no longer the property of John Earnshaw. 
Stop up. I'll be back in May. May? And you're just finding out about this now? They don't always feel the need to tell us the things that greatly affect our lives. Well, where will you go? Nowhere. You know, you're Jerry, going to be here. You know, Jerry, Wait. at least when I was owned by the man who owned my family, I was guaranteed to see them at least once a year. <laughs> it's just so inconsiderate. Well, yes, it's inconsiderate. And uh, will you get to see your family again? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Who knows what the future's going to bring? You know, I'm sorry, Jerry. I got to get this cast back to Mr. Anderson. I feel like you got to get. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> The Christmas compliments. I had a feeling they would get me sooner or later. Oh, no. Uh, you need to get some rest, Phyllis. <laughs> rest? Jerry, I don't get to rest. There's still a whole bunch of work that needs to be done. Good day to you. Have a happy Christmas. Happy Thank Christmas. Well, it's obvious that uh, for the enslaved, the holiday season can be quite, uh, quite difficult. Well, uh, <clears throat> I suppose uh, we must finish up here, folks. The scenes portrayed here at Christmas time in the winter of 1773 were only a few short years away from the official start of the war. The people of Williamsburg would have to endure much uncertainty throughout the many coming years of rapid change during the fight for independence. Amongst the struggles of their time, a message of hope would help lift their spirits serve as a reminder that even today, positive words and acts of kindness can do great wonders for the downtrodden. For the people of Williamsburg, December 1773. Excuse me. What? Yes. Uh, Before you conclude, I should like to offer some warm Christmas wishes to you and your guests. I'm not sure we're in the mood for that, not after the news that we just heard. But it's during the difficult times that we need warm wishes the most, don't you think? Is that not the, the reason we celebrate this season? The, the reason we celebrate Christmas time, that to remind us that the dark days will end and that there's hope. Hope for the wicked? Hope for those who hurt others? Hope for us all. Peace on earth. It will to men. I don't know. Seems a bit hollow. Come now, don't wallow. <laughs> did you really just? <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> All right, I'll follow. Ah, this is what I said last night in the Apollo <laughs> room. Oh. Rhyme one more time, it might be your doom. <laughs> uh, can we hear your warm wishes? Yes, indeed. <clears throat> May we have more friends and less need of them. May honor and honesty always triumph over vanity and hypocrisy. May mirth and good fellowship always be in fashion and may our evening connection stand our morning reflection. <laughs> may we have enjoyment in our hopes and success in our wishes. May every day be happier than the past and every hour merrier than the last. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Everyone. For the people of Williamsburg, December 1773 was the last Christmas tide untouched by the impending war. News of the uh, closing of Boston Tea Party and the closing of the port uh, arrived here in 1774 and set in motion a chain of events which culminated in the war for American independence. But uh, you all know that story doesn't end then, it uh, continues even to this day. Thank you all for joining us today for Intersections, where we gather to explore what life was like for the people of Williamsburg during very difficult uh, times. No matter where you go next, talk with the people you meet, ask questions, consider different perspectives. On this block alone, you may take a tour of the famous Raleigh Tavern, you may visit a trade shop like the silversmith or the apothecary perhaps down the street. Or you might take a, a tour of the Capitol building and learn about the founding principles of what will become the new government of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia. From all of us to all of you, happy holidays and, and enjoy the rest of your day here in Williamsburg.